first, I just want to say our hearts and uh, are with the families uh, and friends of the folks killed in Orlando on uh, yesterday, yesterday morning. Um, it's what an act of terror and hate. Uh, we are, you know, everyone is distraught over this. So uh, for what's going on, I just wanted to dr draw your attention to a few highlights. Um, uh, the big thing is tomorrow the Board of Education is acting on the fiscal 17 uh, school system budget. Uh, and uh, we are very optimistic they are going to implement the elements of, the, uh, of our budget approval that involves uh, uh, adding additional $37.9 million for programmatic solutions in the classroom and uh, not funding, not having the resources to fund all the elements of their negotiated agreements uh, with the uh, school system unions. So that is a uh, big thing for them. Uh, we're uh, confident that the Board of Education is going to follow through on, on its commitment with us. We understand that there is not agreement yet with the school unions. Perhaps there will be by tomorrow. I hope that's the case. But we understand that the board is going to follow through on that. So uh, they'll be doing that uh, in the late morning tomorrow, and you might want to follow along with that. Uh, uh, big news this past week, uh, the general development agreement for White Oak was signed, um, final finalizing um, the uh, commitment of this county to move forward with really a, an exciting uh, economic uh, opportunity in the east part of the county. Uh, we're looking forward to its implementation. We haven't had a chance to look at all the details yet, uh, but uh, uh, this says a lot about this county's commitment to economic development, building off our relationship with the FDA over there, and uh, moving us forward in terms of bringing significant uh, new job creation and new community building in that part of Montgomery County. So um, that was a big deal. Uh, other things on our agenda tomorrow, uh, I can't name who we're pointing to the uh, planning board, uh, but we will be filling um, Amy Presley's seat. Uh, Amy has served the uh, community really tremendously over the past eight years. She was a great advocate in the community for the <laughs> development of Clarksburg and the issues that come out of Clarksburg and has just been a tremendous uh, resource in, uh, for the community and the planning board it is, as it has worked through a lot of really hard master plans over the past few years. Uh, that's a tough job. Uh, regular people trying to serve the public subjected to uh, uh, a lot of community uh, uh, views, uh, criticism sometimes, and challenges. And so we ask a lot of regular uh, civic-minded folks to serve the community on the planning board. And Amy has just done a tremendous job. So uh, our hats are off to uh, Amy Presley. Uh, we're going to keep her on till the end of uh, July as they finish some of the substantive uh, work they have in front of them. And then our uh, uh, new appointee will take um, her place uh, at the end of July, I believe. So uh, that's an important appointment. But another one that is really great is that the county executive has sent over the name of Eloise Foster uh, to be appointed to the WSSC. And um, this, she has unbelievable experience around the state of Maryland, uh, particularly with budget issues. We know she'll have an eagle eye on how WSSC spends its money. And we are really thrilled uh, to have her. Uh, she is just a tremendous uh, uh, resource from the state of Maryland. Uh, luckily, she lives in Montgomery County. And we have uh, every confidence in how she's going to work out. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about her background, it's in our packet uh, for tomorrow. But if you may, you may may not know, she's been the Secretary of Budget and Management for the, the state uh, for the past eight years. Uh, and uh, has done, really has been with the state pretty much uh, most of the time since she got involved in uh, budgetary work from uh, the 70s. And so we could not have a person with a better footing uh, to look at uh, the challenges that WSSC is always uh, uh, 
uh, faced with uh, as it works through its own budget, its billing processes, and how it operates. So uh, it's really terrific uh, that we have Ms. Foster to appoint tomorrow. We, we have to interview her first, technically speaking, but I think that's uh, going to be a slam dunk tomorrow. Uh, uh, another uh, uh, point of great news is uh, Novavax uh, coming to expanding in Montgomery County. They're going to be adding more than 800 jobs. Uh, this is uh, supported by uh, loans from the state and uh, grants from Montgomery County, as well as the city of Gaithersburg uh, and a variety of various uh, tax credit programs. Uh, and it's all related to uh, targeted growth in terms of the jobs that they'll be bringing here. So it's not just a, a free lunch by any means, but it's really important to uh, how Montgomery County defines itself and sees itself going into the future, as you uh, may or may not know, uh, they're involved in um, uh, developing vaccines for uh, Ebola and other viruses. This is a key uh, initiative for the country, and uh, we're really delighted that they're going to be expanding their presence here. Uh, and uh, the other point, I just want to note that uh, Donahue Companies is about to uh, uh, move their headquarters from D.C. To, Mer to Bethesda. They're adding 240 jobs. Uh, that's really uh, uh, exciting for all of us. Uh, they've gotten some assistance, but modest assistance from um, the various governments uh, to establish a major presence here in Montgomery County. So we're also uh, really, really pleased about that. So those are some uh, key points I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, and uh, otherwise, we will uh, we'll be spending uh, uh, the next the rest of the year f doing a fair amount of land use. We'll be doing uh, Littonsville and Bethesda uh, work that's not fully completed down at the planning board yet, uh, and uh, uh, taking up the subdivision staging policy later in the year. What do you make on Thursday's news that Pepco is going to give the county twenty-five million dollars for infrastructure and green energy? Uh, well, that was part of the deal, uh, and I think that was uh, part of the deal that caused us to uh, uh, initially be supportive of all this. We're a little concerned about their rate increase uh, that they're uh, seeking, but uh, uh, I applaud Pepco for making that commitment to the counties. I know the county executive and Mr. Uh, County Executive uh, Baker were uh, uh, celebrating that the other day. Well, given the county's stance on Pepco's rate increase, can this be seen as kind of like, no, Pepco buying off the county? Can you worry about that perception? Well, <laughs> I, I, obviously, I, they, they were trying to uh, uh, create uh, benefits for the community, and they're doing that, and that's a good thing. So you don't worry about public perception that I don't think Pepco has to be worried about our gentle uh, approach to how that we uh, deal with their rate increase issues. So the county is still going to be making that a major. We're issue. always going to uh, be c be fighting for our residents and trying to keep the rates down. I think, on the other hand, we do understand the costs of uh, major utility and uh, what it what it takes to to upgrade facilities. We certainly see that issue with WSSC. The question is uh, what um, is reasonable to expect our residents to bear? And uh, it shouldn't, uh, grants of that sort shouldn't be a sop to avoid criticism. And I don't think we certainly uh, will ever take it that way. But it is a benefit that our residents are going to receive. And that's, as I said, uh, uh, a community uh, ut uh, it's a community benefit that, that we certainly receive happily. Really, can you understand like the skepticism that they're, that, you know, the residents aren't going to receive a benefit in terms of their bills from Petco? Well, one can certainly, you can make that argument. Uh, my name is Carl Staff, I'm new to the Montgomery County Center. I want to ask you a few questions about uh, Nova Vax. So the county is giving uh, up to 2,000, $2.5 million grant to this company. How much of a factor was it that 
the increase of employees versus the fact of what exactly OPEC does with their well, it's, you know, we have, have, the biotech industry is a priority industry for us that we want to support. So there is that. But, of course, at the end of the day, we're looking toward, towards uh, jobs for our residents, expanding our tax base, and that's equally important. I can't say, uh, and so those, those things have both come together in this regard. But it certainly meets our community um, economic development objectives in terms of the uh, biotech uh, focus that uh, we've been supporting throughout the, the uh, 270 corridor for years. And it's very consistent with that. Okay. Oh, usually elaborate a quick on <coughs> other biotech developments we've had recently. I can't give you all that, uh, all that detail right now. But you can get it uh, from Sally Sternback over at DED. Um, any thoughts on what happened about Esther Oh, uh, yes, what uh, a spirit, a uh, force of nature we all would characterize her as. I, you know, I never served with her, uh, but I certainly knew her, and uh, she was really one of the people, few people I've ever met who was so committed uh, to the, to Montgomery County, its present and its future. Uh, she uh, uh, really, until she passed away, uh, she was very involved in political campaigns, uh, very interested, very engaged. She would attend um, Maryland Association of Counties events. Uh, what, when she was in a wheelchair uh, with an oxygen tank uh, because of her um, commitment to who we are as a community, her interest in the issues, and uh, her personal engagement in uh, everything that went on. Um, I, I, I look at Esther, we had sort of similar experiences. She was on the planning board, I was on the planning board, she was on the council, I've been on the council. Uh, and so she had that kind of uh, unique breadth of experience of, of learning the land use issues from the ground up and then uh, implementing and addressing those kinds of issues and other issues as well at the uh, county council level. So um, it was really um, uh, sad to see her go. Uh, of course, she'd been ill for some time. But uh, really, uh, the personal stories that people have offered at her funeral as to how she'd, she'd helped them, uh, her spirit and her uh, commitment were ju just impressive. Uh, our, her funeral contained um, uh, all, every person who could tell the history and gossip of Montgomery County over the past, uh, I'd say, 40 years. Uh, uh, people who knew where all the bodies were buried and Esther had been in, uh, would have known uh, all of that as well. Esther would have loved her funeral uh, because it was uh, such fun and so genuine and um, heartfelt from so many people. Just going back to the Novak's point very quickly, what has been, uh, or has there been any feedback from the citizens of I uh, I haven't heard anything, really. I uh, I mo accept uh, enthusiasm from the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce people, who are uh, very pleased about how aggressive the county is in going towards these uh, th these kinds of um, uh, job creation environment uh, opportunities, uh, and and that's why I've been focusing on. On, on those today because this is uh, the future of Montgomery County and we're in the game. Um, you spoke about the, the, the agreement between the BOE and the unions. Um, if the BOE just imposes uh, the agreement kind of like the council did with the public sector unions, um, 
do you, do you worry about that? That you know, it becomes a rift between teachers and unions and EOE. Uh, well, you know, we're going through a historic period, uh, really a historic moment uh, with the le county leadership and uh, unions. And it's tough. It's tough for the unions to accept uh, this kind of oversight uh, and th these kinds of uh, evolutions in direction. And so, uh, is it a rift? Uh, well, certainly there's some tension there, uh, but I think the union leadership uh, is equally committed towards uh, improving uh, how we deliver services and how their uh, their members are uh, ha have the opportunity to, to deliver those services in the right environment. And I think that's been a particular issue within the school system um, recently. Uh, and I think it, it's an evolutionary period uh, for everyone right now as to uh, the changes that took place with this budget. I don't, I'm sure there are some ruffled feathers and some frustration with uh, uh, the decisions that have been made. No question about that. Uh, and that's because it's change, and change is never easy for people to, uh, uh, never easy to accept Right off the bat, it takes some getting used to, and it, it, we've set a new tone. And given that the EOE has always negotiated their uh, agreements with the union in this year, that so they might just oppose it. Um, did the county council know um, before they um, approved MCPS's budget that the EOE could just oppose this agreement? That they could do what they're going yeah, to do. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, well, we are informed uh, that that is certainly something within their power. Why haven't sure. they used it before? I, I can't speak to that. And I'm not sure that we've had been in that the kind of environment where they were ready to do that. Um, the, we spent a lot of time uh, with this budget um, talking amongst ourselves with board members uh, and with union people about what was best what we could afford, uh, what was reasonable to expect, uh, and what we heard and what they have heard over and over again, particularly within um, the school community, is the issues of how class size was affecting the ability to teach uh, and the absence of support people were making it harder uh, for them, for teachers to do their job. Uh, and so how do you address that? Well, uh, there's only so much money. Um, where does it go? Does it go just to compensation of the existing folks, or is it also employed to support the working environment for the teachers? And we chose the latter. I think the Board of Education was in agreement with that, and that meant um, some of the compensation elements had to give. Uh, and that is the challenge with a very, um, very big budget that the Board of Education has, which is 90 percent uh, devoted to compensation. So the council knew before they put down the budget that the BOE could just do this. Well, we knew. Uh, we, we really hope that the unions will uh, agree that this is the right thing and will concur, but I, I can't say that they will, or, or I can't say what they're going to do. But given uh. so much was riding on um, them coming to an agreement where they could, you know, cut benefits to pay for more teachers, um, the council wouldn't approve MTFS, MCPS's budget without knowing for sure they wouldn't have to approve those uh, step, extra step increases. Well, we, uh, we included uh, conditions in uh, our budget approval uh, that, that set the, these parameters. And those parameters have been adhered to by the uh, Board of Education and by the superintendent in his recommendations to the board. So that's what they're going to act on tomorrow. Have you gotten any updates on the cargo bus depot? I know you have a meeting coming up this month. I uh, no, that's what the point of the meeting is. Frankly, to um, you know, we've listened to the community. Uh, this is a a a, a, bit, a ch classic challenge, uh, how, do, how do we address uh, uh, location of school buses? And uh, so the point of our meeting on the 21st is here from the county executive people and folks of, who are continuing to work on uh, potential solutions. Uh, you know, it's, 
uh, it's a challenge, um, uh, and that's what we'll be talking about then. No idea what, what's going to be presented as of right now? Not yet, no, no. They've been working on it for a long time. There's nothing, no, no simple solution to this one, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, everybody.